In this lesson, we're going to look at how do we determine the number of solutions for a system of equations. And more specifically, we're going to look at how do we determine the number of solutions for a system of equations algebraically. At the very introduction of this chapter, what we looked at is kind of a visual representation of the possible um, number of solutions we could get. So if we had a linear quadratic system or a straight line and a parabola, uh, you might have two solutions or two intersection points like this. You may have one solution or one intersection point like this particular example, uh, or you may have no solutions. The parabola and the line might never intersect. Uh, if you look at a quadratic quadratic system or two parabolas, you may have two solutions or two intersection points. You may have one, it should just be touching here, sorry. Uh, so you may have one solution where they just intersect once or touch once. Uh, those parabolas may not intersect at all or have no solutions. Or the fourth case for parabolas or two quadratics is that they are the exact same function, which means that they intersect everywhere, which would give you infinite solutions. So those are all the possible uh, understandings or solutions for systems of equations. What we're going to investigate in this lesson is how do we determine how many solutions there are uh, algebraically, so if we don't want to graph this. And then we'll also look at what do these graphs look like uh, if we want to do it that way. So we're going to do three problems. <clears throat> they simply say solve and determine the number of solutions for each system of equations. Uh, as per usual, we're just going to start solving this system. Uh, in this particular case, you might want to, you're going to want to look at the y uh, values and ask yourself is substitution, sorry, y uh, variables and ask yourself is substitution or is uh, elimination going to be better? In this particular case, because they both have a coefficient, uh, I would suggest that using uh, elimination would be a lot easier because you're not going to have to get into fractions or dividing at all. So elim to elim in order to eliminate these y coordinates, they have to be opposites. So plus 8y would be the opposite of minus 8y, which is totally possible in the second function uh, to create minus 8y if we just times it by 2. What you're going to see happening here, our first uh, function will remain the same, our equation will remain the same, and our second function, after it's being multiplied by 2, will be negative 4x squared plus 2x minus 8y, and that's equal to 6. Uh, now what I'm going to do is add those functions in order to eliminate the y-coordinate, and what you'll notice is that these are all, every pair of like terms are opposites. Uh, so this is a unique case because what we're going to have is 0 is equal to 0. What this actually means is that both of these functions, graphically speaking, are identical, or in other words, they differ by nothing. 0 equals 0 is true all the time in all cases. Since these two functions differ by nothing, what you're going to find out uh, is that they are called coincidental functions, or in other words, there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. Okay. Uh, if we look at a graphing calculator representation of this, or how could I identify this with a graphing calculator? Uh, here's how. I've just all I've done in this particular case is isolated y in both functions. So I've taken the first function, algebraically isolated y here, and I've taken the second function, algebraically isolated y here. And I'm just going to show you with my graphing calculator uh, that. These are coincidental functions that overlap everywhere at all times, or in other words, have infinite solutions. Uh, if I go to my uh, graphing part of the calculator, I put in the first function here, okay, and I put the second function in for y2, and when I hit graph, all you're going to see is one graph, which shouldn't be terribly... Uh, <clears throat> much new news because these two functions, the first and the second one, are the same function. So they're coincidental. They differ by nothing. All right, let's look at a second example. There's two more to look at. Uh, in this second example, you could, again, this is a system of equations again, a quadratic quadratic. Uh, let's go ahead and solve it using substitution. Since y is isolated in both, func in both functions already, uh, we can just substitute one of the expressions for y into the other function. So I would have, in this case, if I replace y with x squared, I would have x squared is equal to x squared plus 2. And then I'll try and put this into standard form. So make one side equal 0 if I subtract x squared from both sides. What you're going to actually see happening is a unique case where we have 0 is equal to 2. What this means, algebraically speaking, because we, we have eliminated all the variables, what this means is that the two functions differ. They're not identical or differ by nothing like the first case. They actually differ by the constant, which you can see here actually. Uh, since they differ by the constant, all that means is that they are parallel to each other, which means they never intersect. 
two things that are parallel to each other are not going to intersect. So this means here that there's going to be no solutions. Uh, or if you want to look at the graphing calculator, I can show you each function. Uh, if we go to the y equals screen, if I input each of those functions, uh, what you're going to see happen, and this won't be surprising to you either, if I put in x squared plus 2 that's for my first function and x squared for my second function, what you're going to see when I graph it is that these two functions are indeed parallel. Uh, one of them kind of looks like they touch here, but they actually don't. Uh, one of them is a parabola with a vertex at 0, 0, and the other one is 2 above. And I promise these will never touch. They're parallel to each other. They differ by the constant. And if two functions differ by only the constant, they're parallel to each other. All right, so that is the second case. In the last case, uh, let's go ahead and start solving this and see what happens. Again, I would suggest that uh, since y is isolated in the second function, Substitution may be the easiest, so we're going to be left here with x squared plus 4x minus, and we have x plus 5, <clears throat> plus 1 is equal to 0. And if we go ahead and put this into standard form, we have x squared plus 4x minus x minus 5 plus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, we have x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, and this is factorable. This would be x plus 4 and x minus 1, which would get me solutions of, for x, uh, x equals negative 4, and x equals 1. Uh, what we already know is that there's actually going to be two solutions. Since we get two coordinates for x for the intersection of these two functions, uh, we would also have two coordinates for y, which would give us two solutions. I'll go ahead and solve this completely. So if x equals negative 4, if I substitute into one of the originals, I have y equals negative 4 plus 5, which is y is equal to 1. So one of our solutions would be the point negative 4, 1. And our other solution, when I substitute 1 into the, one of the original functions, I would have y is equal to 1 plus 5, which is 6. So our other solution, our other coordinate would be 1, 6. So the key ideas for this lesson are following. How do we determine algebraically the number of solutions to a system of equations? Here's how. If while you're solving a system algebraically you get 0 equals 0. We've already looked at this. What this means is that there are infinite solutions. And that's because the functions are identical and differ by nothing. If they're identical functions, they overlap everywhere or they intersect everywhere, which means they're infinite solutions. Uh, case number two is if we get 0 is equal to a constant other than 0, so 0 is equal to, like the example we had, 0 equals 2, uh, what you're going to have is that there's no solutions. The reason for this is that the functions differ only by the constant, which means that they are parallel. Okay, so there's no solutions in that case. And finally, like we saw in the last case, if we get a case like x equals some number or some value or one or two values or y equals a value uh, there's going to be one or two solutions in the previous case there was two solutions because we got two values of x uh, these are the x and y coordinates for where the functions intersect so that's how algebraically we can determine the number of solutions to a system of equations